Peace be with you. My name is Alan Kiesler. Hello, I'm in the United States. I'm always thinking about Pakistan because Pakistan is not an ordinary place, but is that special land where pure Islam will be reestablished, God willing. This is a very, very important and deeply spiritual point because pure Islam means love. Pure Islam means truth and justice. Pure Islam means mercy and kindness. The real meaning of Islam is not only la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. The real meaning of Islam is not only that there is no God but God and that there is that that Holy Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him is the messenger of God. But pure Islam also means love. We must love God and we must love each other. So I am convinced that this is what is happening now in Pakistan. Gradually, more and more people are understanding what Islam really means, that Islam really means love. The most important thing in Islam, the most important thing in every religion is love, love and kindness, mercy and forgiveness, justice, fairness, truthfulness and honesty. These are the essence of Islam. Without them, the law is meaningless. Really, the law is always important, but without the foundation of love and truth and justice, it really has no meaning. So this is what Pakistan is meant for. That's my understanding. So because of love, everything happens. Truth also actually depends on love. People usually think the other way around, if anything. They think truth is truth, but we don't understand that really truth depends on love. If we love, we can understand the truth. If we don't have love, we will not even be able to understand the truth. This is the importance of love. So love carries all things, as the Bible says. If we have love, everything else follows. If we don't have love, everything else fails. So I'm going to continue reading today about Guan Yin Miao Shan, who is the Chinese angel of mercy. She is a very amazing personality. Um, of course, different people have different ideas, but uh, my understanding is that Miao Shan was not just a little girl who was born in China thousands of years ago, but she is an eternal spiritual being, an angel, the angel of mercy. And she appears from time to time. This is what many people in China believe, not only I'm saying it. Uh, the name of Alokateshvara, which is a name given also to Guan Yin, uh, means the same thing in Sanskrit as Avaloka, as Guan Yin means in Chinese. It means that she or he uh, hears the cries of the world, listens to the suffering cries of people and helps us. And Avalokiteshvara takes many forms. Uh, Guan Yin is only one of the forms that Avalokiteshvara takes. He or she, because Avalokiteshvara appears both uh, in human form, male or female, and even in non-human form. So there are many stories about different appearances of Avalokiteshvara, but probably Guan Yin is the most famous one, certainly in China, by far the most famous one. So I just wanted to clarify that so we don't have any misunderstanding about what I'm talking about when I'm talking about Guan Yin. So this great angel of mercy, Guan Yin or Avalokiteshvara, appeared, I don't know exactly when it was, but it was thousands of years ago in China 
as the princess Miao Shan and the daughter of King Miao Chan Ying. So, as we uh, talked about last week, a week ago, she had uh, refused to become married as her parents wanted her and became a nun. And then her father finally became angry uh, because she refused to marry and he wanted he wanted her to have a son because he needed somebody to follow his him as a king. It was supposed to be his son, but he didn't have any sons. So he had daughters. His other daughters did not have any sons. So he was very eager for Miao Shan to get married and have a son, but she didn't want to get married. So she became a nun in the convent. And uh, finally, King uh, Miao Tuang Yen became so upset that he tried to burn down the whole monastery because she was not doing what he wanted. And then finally he put her in prison and finally he tried to kill her. He sent her to be executed. <clears throat> but as the executioner was about to cut off her head with a huge sword, a tiger came <clears throat> and picked her up, put her, on, put her on his back and ran off into the forest with her and then brought her to a cave and when she was in that cave, she could hear the crying of the suffering souls in the valley of death or in hell. So different people have different ideas about exactly what hell is. But one thing is clear to me, that there is a place or there are different places where people are suffering greatly. And somehow Miao Shan became aware of that place and went there wanting to save the suffering people because she heard the cries. Wan Yin means the one who hears the cries. So she heard the cries of the suffering people. She went to that place where everyone was suffering so much and helped them become free from their suffering. And uh, it is said that the fires, the flames of hell stopped and actually turned into flowers as a result of her love for the people uh, suffering there. So after this had happened, Mao Shan realized that uh, this is what's going to happen to her father. That because he had been so cruel, he was also going to suffer uh, in a hellish condition like this. So wanting to save him from this suffering, she decides, okay, I'm going to go back to Earth uh, and try to save him too, because she loved him, even though he had done all these horrible things to her. So according to the story as it's told, uh, she rode in the heart of a sweet-smelling lotus flower and flew back to Fragrant Mountain, which is north of Beijing. It's a famous mountain in northern China. So, it is, of course, part of the plan of God uh, that after Mao Shan had returned to this earth from that hellish place, uh, that her father, the king, because of all the horrible things he had done to his daughter and to the nuns in the White Sparrow Convent, he became very, very sick. And this disease spread all over his, his body. The best doctors in the kingdom could not cure him or even understand what was wrong with him. He became so sick that he could hardly sleep or eat anything for days. Uh, for a long time, he became more and more sick. And finally, the doctors uh, saw that he's just about to die. But at that time, a shining young monk uh, appeared in the palace. He came there and asked to see the king. So the monk came before the king, Miao Chuan Yin, and he said to him, my dear king, uh, I can cure your disease, but I will need a special medicine. And to make it, I will have to grind up the arms and eyes of someone who would happily give them. And this person must be someone who has never become angry and who always takes care of everyone else without worrying about himself or herself. So uh, the king was 
and everybody else who was there in the court thought there can't be any such person like that. And so he said to that monk, well, where can I find such a kind person? The monk said, yes, there is such a person, O king, <laughs> right in your own kingdom, in the southwestern part of your kingdom, living on Fragrant Mountain. So King Miao Chuang Yin was very uh, relieved and hopeful. So he immediately sent his men there, and they found Miao Shan and told her the whole story about what had happened to his her father. And she is very happy to hear that she can save her father's life from this deadly disease. And she calmly dug out her eyes, both of them, and uh, she asked one of the men to cut off her arms. And people say the whole earth and even hell and heaven shook when Miao Shan uh, did this. So eagerly even, you know, calmly, happily, even she was eager to cut out her own eyes and cut off her arms if she could in that way save her father. So the king's men immediately went back to the palace with Miao Shan's arms and eyes, and the young monk made this special medicine from them, and taking it, cured the king from his strange disease. The king thanked the monk and wanted to give him many gifts, but the monk said, no, don't thank me. You should thank the person who gave her eyes and arms for you. Then suddenly the monk disappeared. So the king at once called for a carriage and gets ready to go along with his queen. They go to Fragrant Mountain to thank this person who has saved his life. And when they reach there, they find this blind person who has no arms. They got down from their carriage and bowed their heads before that person. And as soon as they raised their heads, the king and queen stared for a moment. And then both of them screamed, Miao Shan, our own long lost daughter crying and crying, they fell at her feet, and the king begged her, I have treated you so badly and even tried to kill you, but in re return you have given up your eyes and arms just to save me. So holding his daughter's feet, King Miao Chong Yen said, I am so evil that I have caused my own daughter such terrible suffering. How can I go on living any more? How can I ask you to forgive me? Miao Shan replied, My dear father, please don't worry. You have done so much for me. Actually, I have felt no pain in giving my arms and eyes for you. I am just happy that I could do something for you after you and my mother gave me my life and did so much for me when I was a baby and a child. So just like she has saved the people in hell, Miao Shan talks so sweetly to her parents that they soon stop crying and become peaceful. They stand up and give her hundreds of hugs and kisses. And just then, a cloud, a white cloud, covered Miao Shan, and her parents could not see her anymore. The earth shook gently, and flowers rained down from the sky. And after a moment, a heavenly being appeared with a thousand diamond eyes and a thousand golden arms, stepped out from the cloud. And... The king and queen realized, this is Miao Shan. And her parents looked at her in amazement. Then she rose up into the sky until the clouds hid her from their sight again. And the mother and father, the king and the queen, were so thankful. Uh, they could not express their thanks in any other way that they could think of, so they built a grand temple there on that spot to their thousand-armed daughter. Uh, so on Fragrant Mountain, that mountain uh, north of Beijing in China today, that temple is there with that thousand-armed Guan Yin. So Miao Shan means, uh, excuse me, Miao Shan, who's now called Guan Yin, Guan Yin means uh, the one who hears the cries of the world. So that is how she has become famous and the most famous, most popular uh, spiritual personality in all of China. All right, that's all I'm going to say right now. Let's see what questions or comments we may have. 
So, Yaseen Hakim, Assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum salam, Yaseen Haji. Taimur Hussain says, Ramzan Mubarak, Baba Ji. Ramzan Mubarak to you too, Taimur Hassan. And uh, other people are also, I'm not going to read them all, uh, are also saying Ramzan Mubarak, uh, Usman Huwayan Jat, and Jat, and uh, Amna Iqbal, Sahib Dada, Bir Mubarak, all are saying Ramzan Mubarak. Uh, Sahib Zada, Pir Mabub Rahbani also says, Pray for me. Oh God, please bless Sahib Zada, Pir Mabub Rahbani. And all of us, we need your help. Oh God, please help us all to turn to you, depend on you, understand you are in control of everything. And with that understanding, we can be peaceful and happy, knowing that you are our best friend. You are all powerful. So let us all pray for each other in this way. Thank you very much. Sahib Zada Pir Mahbub Durbani for that request. So Amin Malik says, It is possible that extraterrestrials were humans from this earth and traveled to other planets. They have similar mental attributes. Yes, that's possible. It's also possible that we human beings came from other planets. <laughs> There certainly has been travel between the Earth and other planets for thousands, if not millions, and even billions of years. We really don't know our past history very accurately, but we do know for sure that uh, throughout human history, we have stories of angels coming to this planet. Angels are not from this planet. They are from heaven or from other planets. And uh, so we have, in every culture, there are these stories of creatures uh, powerful creatures in one way or another who come here from other planets or other places, maybe other dimensions also. So you are right. Not only it's possible that we have gone there, but they have come here. In fact, I believe that we are going to other planets, but it's been kept secret from us. It's not being publicized in the mass media. Governments are not reporting it for whatever reason, but it's a fact. So Usman Humayun Jat says, Ramzan Mubarak to you and your family. Uh, thank you very much. I think I mentioned that before. Then Amin Malik says, Is spirit of extraterrestrials are same as humans? Um, I believe so, yes. Of course, there are some extraterrestrials that are more like robots, so they don't have a soul like we have. Um, but those who are not biological creations or genetic manipulations or uh, and appear to be living human beings but are actually biological robots, uh, other than they, other than them, the extraterrestrials, I believe, do have the very same uh, spirit as we have. And some have bodies exactly like ours also. And some have the bodies that are quite different. But I believe the spirit is the same, yes. I'm not 100% sure about that. There may be different types of spirits. But basically, we are all the servants of God. That I'm certain about. Okay, <clears throat> let's see what other, thank you for those good questions, although they weren't about going in, it would be nice to have some questions about this topic, but anyway, it's very important to understand about extraterrestrials also, so thank you for those questions. All right, I guess that's all the questions we have, so thank you all very much, and let me just remind you that at 9 p.m., that's just a little over an hour from now, uh, today, and God willing, every day, at least for the full month of Ramzan, we will be having a zikr. We will be having uh, a conversation, a group conversation, uh, for the protection of Pakistan. So in just a little over two hours, exactly, excuse me, a little over one hour from now, one hour and ten minutes from now, uh, we will, God willing, have that conversation. It's going to be on a uh, Skype chat, so you can also join. Um, so hopefully you can click on the link. It's there on my Facebook page. And then you should receive a notification uh, when that chat starts. And then you can just click the link and you can join. So this is 9 p.m. Pakistan time uh, today and every day for the rest of Ramzan at least. God willing. Okay, thank you all very much. I'll just say Ramzan Mubarak to 
Bila Alberta and everyone else who's wishing me Ramzan Mubarak also. Allah Hafiz. May God protect us all. And let us remember the example of Guan Yin, who very willingly, even happily, sacrificed even her own arms and eyes for the salvation of others. And because she heard the suffering cries of others, and she knew what would happen to her father, so she did such a sacrifice. So let us all learn uh, from her example and from the example of many other great spiritual teachers uh, that we should sacrifice our own happiness and our own interests uh, for the sake of others, as Guan Yin did. Allah.